Now let's think about adding routing in. We won't do anything too fancy, just add static routes as we saw in the last video. The firewall seems like a good place to start. First, it will need a default route to the internet. This uses the ISP's router as the next hop. It also needs to send traffic back into our network, so we need routes for that too. We can simplify this by using summary addresses. All our subnets fall within these two summaries. That's an advantage of planning out your subnets. It simplifies the routing table. On the core, let's start with the default route. The next hop for this is the IP of the firewall. We also need to add routes for the remote sites. These use the IP of the edge router as the next hop. It's also good to add routes for the point-to-point -point links as well. This is especially useful when running traceroute. Moving on to the WAN edge router, once again, we need a default route. This points towards the core switch. No doubt you've noticed that we need a default route in most cases. We also need routes to reach the remote sites. These use the IPs of the remote site routers as the next hop. The remote site routers will need a default route of course. The next hop is the WAN router in the main office. We don't need anything other than a default route here. Can you see why? The default route is essentially a catch-all route. It's a summary for all of our networks, and that suits us as there is only one way in or out of this network. This type of network is frequently called a stub network. Well, that's a lot of static routes that we need. It would be a pain to configure all of these manually, so in the next video, we'll start looking at dynamic routing to simplify our lives. Now before we finish, I have a promise to keep. I said I'd explain how we can reuse VLAN IDs for our workstations and phones. In previous videos, I've said that we should have only one subnet per VLAN. But here we have a few sites with several subnets and yet we're reusing the same VLAN IDs in some cases. Well, our design uses a mix of layer two and layer three. VLANs, as you'll recall, are layer two, while subnets are layer three. We've made the links between the main office and the branch offices routed links. By doing this, we've limited the layer two scope of each site. Think of each site as a layer two bubble. Layer two components are not extended beyond the border of the site. Any VLANs on one site, regardless of its ID, is completely separate from VLANs in any other site. In that way, we are able to reuse VLANs in other sites. Nice little trick, isn't it? As you build your skills in networking, you'll need to create designs and documentation. It's a required skill as you grow into more senior roles. So we're gonna start here with a simple design document for the network we've just discussed. Patreon supporters can download the document from the site and use it as your own template at work if you want to. Now you've got those skills locked away, we can move on to dynamic routing protocols. We'll see a few examples and how they can make our lives easier.